So welcome to volume two of my vlog series on building your own laser. As you can see, uh, when I left you last in the, first, uh, in the first video in this series, I had the frame built and now you can actually see the laser is running behind me here. It's built, it's got a laser head over here, it's got a model number over there which makes it official. And uh, so rather, and the reason I did that was rather than have you watch me turn screws in on a particular cadence as I build this thing from the ground up, I thought it would be better uh, in part because the design was evolving as I went to some degree. So I thought I would rather kind of walk you through some of the big subsystems here and why I did things, what I did, how I did it in, in some cases, where I made compromises and how I worked around some of the big problems. So with that uh, kind of footnote, uh, let's get started here. So how's it going everybody? Steve here, welcome back to the shop. And I, you can see my usual background is actually over there. Uh, I'm sitting in front of my, uh, my laser I built. In this video, what I wanted to do is walk you through some of the kind of core uh, mechanics of the system. So how the X, Y, and Z axes work, a uh, little bit of talk about the optics and the tube. You can actually see the tube sitting right back here behind me uh, in, the, in the background there. And, uh, you know, just kind of show you how some of that stuff went together. So with that, let's get started with the axes and then we'll, we'll move on to the optical path. Okay, so we're going to start by looking at the uh, x-axis. And you can see there's a mount here for the for the actual carriage and got some belts running along the side here down to an adjuster this is an off-the-shelf adjuster and then I created this uh, this aluminum f replacement frame I originally started with an acrylic one if I can focus it here and you can see it used to fit there, but I found even with four millimeter acrylic, it was a little flexible. So I replaced it recently with this, uh, this one I machined out of aluminum uh, over on my uh, Onefinity. And anyway, that's the x-axis and you can see if I, if I move things here, you can see it moves fairly slow, nice and quiet. There's, and uh, it will come over to the end stop there. So that's the, that's the X. Now for the Y axis, we have something similar. We have another adjuster, belt tensioner. Uh, I still have the acrylic on here. Uh, there's not as much tension on this one, but I may actually replace this one as well at some point. And that belt runs along the horizontal down to the back. And you can see it, it has the, a gear back here and a long shaft with a double shafted stepper motor and then a matching uh, mount on the other side. So that's the Y. Again, uh, standard belts, nothing uh, nothing too fat. I, I was going to put larger belts on, but these seem to work fine. I may change them at some point, but it's not critical. Now looking at the Z axis, you can see there's four threaded rods that mount onto the edge of the bed, the workspace and they go down to, to a pulley on each corner and there's four of those. And then you can see there's some additional tensioners here uh, and a stepper motor. And if I can look down through a very dirty laser, you'll see there's two more on the other end. And what those do is raise the, the bed up and down and allow you to create engraving on thicker items. The travel here is about 300 millimeters, about a foot, uh, 12 inches, and uh, that's plenty for anything that I'm going to do. So that's, that's the drivetrain. You can see things are wired here, all the wiring's in. I'll talk about the wiring in another video though. Okay, we're going to start looking at the optics, the optic path here. And we'll start with the laser tube and you can see it's a Cloud Ray CR90 tube. It's about a 1250 millimeter tube, so it's about four feet long, uh, 80 millimeters in diameter, which is, I don't know, three inches or so. So you can see the mounts, and there's actually adjustments on them. You can raise them up and down, and when, and there's actually a mount here, you can slide them on the rail. 
side to side. And when you're happy, you can lock down the height here. It's very important that this, that the tube is both level and square with the gantry, the gantry over here. So they has to be very parallel. Otherwise you're mounting, uh, an incorrect mounting will just result in a lot of stress around uh, alignment. So take the time to make sure that everything is square. So the tube itself comes out into this mount here, which is, uh, it's actually the first mirror. You can see the red dot shining off the mirror. This, this mount has a, a, an adjuster for or a, a tiny uh, red laser here for doing alignment. And that follows the beam path all the way through. The mount itself, you can see it's just mounted on a pedestal. So it comes down and it's mounted here. And again, I could slide this both side to side a bit. You can turn this mount uh, to get a bit of side to side and you can certainly move it forward or back to get it centered on the, the laser output. So it bounces off of that mirror, comes down the side here to mirror two. So mirror two has uh, some sliders here to move it side to side as well. And you can see the, the head down, down the path here. So you can use these adjusters to move things up and down. And then you can adjust here with, with these. And there's also locking nuts here. Uh, so the beam bounces off of this mirror and down to the third mirror, which is in the, which is in the tube here. And so it's here at a 45 degree angle and it, its purpose is to direct the beam straight down onto the workspace. Now it, it goes through this tube and there's a, a lens here. Uh, I have a two inch lens. So uh, from about the top of the focus uh, tool here down to the, the, the bed is around two inches, but you can put other lenses and tubes on here as well. And again, this one, you can adjust the height here. Now, the reason I like these mounts is because uh, some of the cheaper mounts use an Allen key to adjust. Uh, here you can see we actually can adjust the tension. There's the springs are here so we can adjust the tension on the springs, but we can also then use these thumb screws to adjust uh, up and down and left to right. And the way, the reason I like these is because the pivot point is over in the corner. So this one adjusts only left to right and this one only adjusts up and down. And when you're happy, you can use these lock screws that are down below to, to lock down your, your adjustment so that things don't move around. So the light will pass down through, through the tube. It'll hit this lens and focus. And you can see here the red dot that started out way back there is now coming out the tube. And if you look really closely, you can kind of see it's pretty close to the center of the tube. So, uh, but I'll show you how to do an adjustment uh, and calibration uh, in another video. So anyway, that's, that's the alignment. So at this point we have, we can move the beam left and right, forward and back. And uh, we have the optics in, so we could actually fire the, a beam here and fire a test. Uh, I, I won't, even though my laser is currently uh, calibrated uh, fairly well, uh, I won't fire a test because we'll at least for now pretend that we, we need to do an alignment later and I'll show you how to do that uh, in, in the future. Uh, for now, just assume that everything is out of alignment and we're gonna fix it. Uh, note also on the head here, and we'll talk about this as well in a future video, there's a little focus pin here as well as uh, on the back, you can see an air tube. Uh, I have the air turned off. If I turn it on, you'll hear it'll make a bunch of noise and it actually blows a lot of air out there. Uh, but we, again, we'll talk about that stuff in, in the future. The focal pin here is kind of, I guess the poor man's replacement for uh, what uh, FSL does on the Muse with using the camera to do the focus. And, uh, but it works, it works very, fairly well. If I, even here where I have a soft material on, if I, if I do the focus, you can see it'll come down and eventually push the pin in and then it'll back off. And, and this is the, the perfect focal height here. 
So there you go, there's the two most important subsystems in the laser, the drivetrain and the laser itself. Uh, those two things work hand in hand constantly as the laser is operating. The, the beam is moving around on the mechanics and uh, everything has to be in square there. So it's really not that bad, but uh, there's just a lot of things that have to kind of fall into the right places. So it's, it can be a bit tedious. Uh, now, as you may notice, I broke my first goal of this project, which was only off the shelf parts. Uh, you saw in the ends of the gantry, I created a couple of acrylic pieces and the, uh, the mounting plate for the tensioners I also created for the X and Y axes. Uh, nothing I could do about that, it's just how the project ended up. Uh, however, I will make those parts, the plans for those parts available. If you, if you have a laser, you can cut them out yourself. Uh, if you don't, hopefully have, you know somebody who's got one. If you're really stuck, you can let me know. I can make those parts available for some kind of nominal fee, mostly just material costs plus shipping. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's unfortunate, but that's just how things had to work. I wasn't willing to make compromises on the drivetrain to work around off-the-shelf parts, so it was just easier to do it this way. Uh, anyway, in the next video, we'll cover the wiring right from the front panel all the way back to the, to the power supply for the laser, as well as just plugging into the line. Uh, and uh, we'll cover that uh, next time. So hopefully you're getting something out of this. As always, uh, I'll put a video up on the side here, maybe the first video in this series if you haven't already seen it. And uh, get out there and make your world. And hopefully you're making a laser as well. So I'll see you next time.